You're listening to 17 Karat K-Pop. For more about this show, as well as my other podcast, How to Stand, visit 17karatkpop.weebly.com. There you'll find episode guides, as well as additional reading, more exclusive content, tons of great stuff. And never miss an update, an album review, interview, etc. by subscribing to the free newsletter, howtostand.substack.com. You could also become a paying subscriber on Substack, and that means you're supporting an independent creator and become part of a community, howtostand.substack.com. Enjoy the show! Hello everybody, welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. So much news to get to today, and I'm really excited because first of all, who's going to KCON? I will see you there. More info to come in the coming weeks, but I will be doing press on the ground at KCON. Feeling very blessed for the opportunity, very excited to tell you more, but just please stay tuned. Updates will first go to howtostand.substack.com, so make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter, as well as, of course, this podcast. KCON is really shaping up to be so, so epic this year. They added P1 Harmony and Stray Kids to the lineup. And I assume that does not replace the surprise guest that they said was coming. There's still a third surprise, I think. And I think at 17 still, I continue to be bullish about that. Some of the special stages that have been teased so far for KCON include a Kepler and Luna stage, and an N hyphen in N mix one involving a relay dance. Plus, Japanese groups J01 and INI are set to debut new Korean versions of some of their songs. Meanwhile, if you want to see the version of KCON on the road, that tour is changing forms. So they decided to merge the two nights in each city into just one show. So now instead of two artists over two nights, they have one show with four artists. Interestingly, they cite, quote, unforeseen circumstances and technical difficulties, unquote which to me is pretty vague and is just a way to say poor ticket sales, and I'm assuming they realized people just wanted all four. You can have four in one show. Gravity Lightsome, Stacy T01. I don't know if there's a big enough fandom right now for each act to generate enough buzz quite yet to be with just one other. Anyway, so if you did get a ticket to night one, the show in the city has been switched to the night two, the date of night two. You can be refunded. And night one purchasers, you guys should have an email from them, an access code to repurchase tickets for a discount. So you get your money back and discounted tickets if you reorder. I don't want to say too much else about my thoughts on the KCON mini tour, because everything I have to say about all sorts of things related to KCON, even just tangentially, I'm saving. I have so much in store KCON related the second half of this month. Stay tuned, I'm so excited, but I can't say more now. Meanwhile, the latest tour and performance updates. Who's going to N hyphen? I'm so psyched. They're going to have such a big live show. And I wonder if their KCON show is going to borrow from and tease the world tour performances. That will be so cool live. And who's going to see ATs? They also announced a world tour. But they'll probably tease a little bit at KCON. Can't wait. ATs ticket info as of recording time, TBA. I'll keep you posted. The hyphen tickets are at both Ticketmaster and AXS.com. And remember the hack I told you about when I was talking about TXT tickets, you gotta keep checking back, even though you know it's sold out, or you think you know. Someday randomly, I've had it happen where suddenly I go check again, and there's a small window of time where someone did give up their ticket, and it's yours for the taking. So keep checking back. And if that's not the case, you might still get lucky because as the date gets very close, scalpers sometimes drop their prices to be quite reasonable because at that point they just want to get rid of it. Very Very announced a U.S. and Latin American tour. Theirs is through My Music Taste, so go to their website for more. It starts in Boston, September 14th, ends in Mexico City, October 16th. DKB has a meet and live tour extension, so they will have a few return stops in the USA, Jersey City, September 15th, and San Jose, October 5th. They'll also go to Colombia, Brazil, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Chile, and Canada. Alexa announced a USA tour with Studio PAV, so follow them on socials for the latest, but so far just the dates and cities have been announced for mid-October. You can see Alexa at Jersey City, Puerto Rico, Atlanta, Chicago, Oklahoma City, Houston, San Francisco, and LA the day before Halloween. Really hope y'all get dressed up. Also in October, the 22nd, 
Monster X will perform at Nickfest. Very curious how that goes down. The first year they're trying to have their own Nickelodeon festival of sorts. And they actually have an impressive lineup. I underestimated that. It's not just like people on Nick TV shows. Not that they're not talented, but you know what I mean. They got the kid Leroy, Alec Benjamin, Sayla Melise, Boys World, Olivia O'Brien, and of course, Monsta X. That event is at the Rose Bowl Stadium grounds in Pasadena, again, October 22nd and 23rd, but Monsta X's performance will be day one. Let's move on to TV news. You can officially stay in the house where BTS filmed In the Soup. This is an Airbnb contest with two lucky winners. The place has an outdoor pool, complete with unicorn float, a sound system, karaoke machine, lots of BTS albums, basketball court, catering of BTS's favorite dishes, really quite a full immersive experience. So you can live it up if you enter a raffle for $7 through Airbnb. Whoever goes, please vlog. Speaking of BTS, J-Hope is the reason to open the YouTube app lately. His full Lala set is up now as is his episode on the premiere of Zico's new YouTube series, Give Me a Minute, literally the name of it. There is a new TV show that premiered on KBS at the end of July called Listen Up. The show is just a short six-episode one about fulfilling specific missions as a producer. Lee Dehui, Palo Alto, Peak Boy, some big names on this lineup. The scoring is determined 70% based on live views, live viewer votes. 30% based on online votes. And the online votes are from you just hearing one minute snippets of each song. I don't know if this was the plan, but that's a very smart marketing move. Get those TikTok ready samples of the songs promoted to the online audience. Another new show you should know about, it's called the Idol Band Boys Battle. This still has open auditions if you live in Korea or Japan. It's just for boys born from January 1st, 1995 up through December 31st, 2009. So they're looking for a pretty young new male group to form. This is an SBS show, by the way. The MCs will be Yabuki Nako from HKT48 and Loon from SF9. Some quicker, exciting news about TV programming before I get to the one that gets a thumbs down. Irene has a new variety show on season called Irene's Work and Holiday, which is showing her on vacation with the staff who've been with her since debut. So that's an interesting dynamic. P.S. Happy belated eight-year anniversary Red Velvet. And the confirmed judges for the new season of Street Man Fighter, Boa Unhyuk from Super Junior and Woo Yun from 2PM. I'm particularly excited about Boa, but I think they'll all be great. Now for what gets a thumbs down for me. I'll make this the question of the day. What are your thoughts about the Isaacs, Idol School Athletic Championships? Basically, the Disney Channel games, only way more intense, and the humor and frivolity is replaced with dread. The Isaacs still happen, though. They get good ratings. This one will air during the Chusik holiday in mid-September. Filming was just a week and a very intense week. It sounds like very long hour days. And it was kind of private, so it's all kind of rumors. I can't confirm how long it ran, what the conditions were like. But it seems to be an open secret in the K-pop world that the Isaacs do not treat their athletes of the day with tons of care. Lots of time without breaks or water. It's a whole thing. Curious what you think, though. Because frankly, sometimes it is kind of cool to see like a field day with your faves. But honestly, what I think of every year is not so much the event, but the fact that idols are expected to do it. Like, imagine feeling like you have to be all these different things. You have to be a great singer, a great dancer, maybe a great actor, a great just charismatic stage presence, a cool MC maybe, a model for ads, a collaborator, a songwriter, a producer, whatever. So many roles you can fill and are expected to keep getting better and better at. You're supposed to be a pro in so many areas. And then all of a sudden they're like, not impressed. Can you shoot a bow and arrow? Like imagine having to be viewed as an athlete too. Does not sound right. Maybe the solution is for the Isaacs to just have categories that are more fun. 
for the artists, let them pick. What do they want to do? What would be fun? Let's go back to really fun. Like not archery, track and field, the typical stuff they do. I'm talking like kindergarten field day. I'm talking like parachute games. I'm talking sitting on those little scooters that you sit on and push other people in. Potato sack races. Let's do that. And if they're not having fun, then never mind. This year they are having a new category, I think, genuinely, the idols will like to do, and that's good. Dance sports is what they're calling it. So I guess it's a dance-off. That's fun to watch, admittedly, but let me know what you think about watching and supporting or not the Isaacs. Is watching just condoning the unfair treatment they are alleged to go through, or is it a way to at least make up a little further trouble? Well, at least people saw it, maybe got a laugh out of it. Because I think the only thing worse than being expected to be an athlete for a week is being expected to be an athlete for a week and no one watches. Before we talk about the VMA nominations, let's just keep talking about the more concerning stuff. An anonymous K-pop star, just described as an idol-turned-actor in his 30s, a male, turned himself into police after he got caught in a big scam. So here's what happened. He said he was hired to collect money that would then be wired to employers. Apparently right now in Korea, it's not super uncommon for people who really are desperate for work to fall victim to scam jobs online. Well, not just in Korea. I'm sure that's a there's an uptick in that the past few years everywhere, but specifically voice phishing scams have been an issue in Korea since first being reported back in 2006, and they actually keep just going up a lot. Last year's total number is nothing compared to this year's, which is up 60%. For victims in their 20s and 30s, again, who are more desperate for work. Victims of the scam tend to lose an average of 10-20% to of their daily pay, which really adds up. What happens is, people are tricked into, during a phone call, giving up personal financial info. The majority of phishing scams are money transfer scams. So when scammers tend to impersonate authority and get you to take money out of your bank account for them. So one of those missions to coax money out of people was disguised as just money collecting to pay back employers for stuff that this guy accidentally wound up doing. I guess it's a part-time job because acting wasn't paying the bills anymore. I don't know. His identity is under wraps. But he says he was so ignorant the whole time to what was going on. He still could be punished for aiding and abetting a crime, though. And the case has been referred to prosecution. The official charge is called financial fraud. He could face up to five years behind bars in a 10 million won fine. He actually did, once he realized it was a scam, obviously give up the job, but also return the money he had obtained from the victim he could have tried to pocket. And out of this, he did get, from the victim, 6 million won, which is over 4.5k. For a minimum wage worker, that's a big deal. I don't know if it was a minimum wage worker. I'm just saying, for a vulnerable person, that's not nothing. I assume the case as it progresses will stay pretty under wraps. It's not like we'll have a big unmasking day. But if we do get any updates about who this is, what happened, I will definitely let you know. On to happier news. The VMAs this year air live from New Jersey, August 28th, 8 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern or 8 p.m. Pacific. One of the most notable things that stuck out to me about the nominees in this first round of Nominees Revealed is that Lisa is the first K-pop soloist to ever get a nomination. You can see the full list and vote at vote.mtv.com, but I do just want to bring attention to a couple really interesting nominations. First of all, Seventeen nominated for Best New Artist. I mean, I'm not mad about it, but Best New Artist? Where have you been? And it's not even like, well, they're newer to American audiences. Because actually, they filled arenas back pre-pandemic in the USA, so they've been big news here. Maybe it's because they were the push artist for MTV for a while. But wait till MTV learns that an artist isn't a new discovery only after you discover it, right? Like Columbus can't, this is a stupid comparison, but whatever. Like Christopher Columbus can't say, I'm nominating America for best new country. He just like found it. Just because you discovered it doesn't mean they're new. Anyway, that just really threw me. But I'm glad, better late than never, that 17 are on their radar. Also, their performance of Rock With You, nominated for Push Performance of the Year. So there you go. 
One category this year that caught my eye, Best Metaverse Performance, which includes BTS from the Minecraft show and Blackpink for the PUBG show. Also interesting, BTS's Permission to Dance, nominated for Best Choreography, alongside no other K-pop acts. And I'm sorry, but my standards for choreography being praiseworthy really rose with K-pop. When I first got into K-pop, like, it was like, why do I watch So You Think You Can Dance? Like, you guys are the real deal. I'm just saying it's just, like, so freaking next level that anything in comparison to K-pop dance routines, I'm like, they should just be, K-pop needs its own dance category, man. All due respect to the nominees, I'm just saying. BTS are also nominated in Best Visual Effects for their Coldplay collab, My Universe. In one category for Best K-pop, I will let you decide what you think about it. I don't want to get into any fandom feuds or anything, which is the downside of K-pop categories at award shows. So much annoying tension. But anyway, so the only thing I'll say about the best K-pop nominees is just, it's always interesting to me what's picked. Because they're usually, by the time the VMAs actually happen, given the fast pace of K-pop, they're like two comebacks behind. So like the release they're celebrating is from two ages ago in K-pop years. So that is always kind of odd to me. Anyone with insider tea about the best K-pop category nomination debate, how it went down in the meeting room, my DMs are open. The nominees are BTS, Yet to Come, ITZY, LOCO, LISA, LA LISA, SEVENTEEN, HOT, STRAY KIDS, MANIAC, and TWICE, THE FEELS. Let's get to a rapid fire round of updates now. Source Music had an appeal rejected in court. July 24th, the Korean Intellectual Property Rights Group officially denied their request to trademark the name Jifra, which means that Source Music's consent and approval not required if Jifra wants to still use the name, even if they have fewer members than before. Legally cleared to do so. The latest COVID cases, four members of NCT, causing NCT Dreams sold out dome shows to be canceled, SMH, Kum Donhyun from EPEX, Che Shiwan from Super Junior, Joe Yuri, Zico, two members of Billy, and two members of WJSN. Sector 17 is officially the first K-pop album repackage to surpass 1 million sales in its first week. It's also 17's first top 5 entry in the Billboard 200's chart, taking 4th place. Speaking of 17, they've teamed up with UNESCO Korea for the Going Together campaign. The mission is to, quote, raise awareness of the importance of education and to think about the future direction education should take, unquote. Some profits from the Be The Sun World Tour will be donated to the cause. Zico and Oh My Girl both joined Weverse. Itzy are the new global ambassadors for Charles Keith. Simon Dominic is the new global ambassador for the brand Golden Goose. Kai won Rookie Male Entertainer at the Blue Dragon Series Awards. Congrats to 2PM's Chan Soon, who's now a dad, to a baby girl. Congrats also in order for Go Worry from Rainbow, who is getting married. And then totally separately, for Estella's Ko Wurin, to an Olympic gold medalist figure skater, Kim Yuna. Nuxal has officially planned an end of September wedding. Congrats to Benzino, who just made his marriage official. NCT 127 are Puma's newest APAC ambassadors, APAC. And they are starting off their promo push with Puma, with the classic slipstream design being re-promoted. They also have a really, really cute new handmade designed capsule collection, with a couple of the members' DIY ideas. Victin just revealed their official white stick design. Black Swan just lost two members, Judy and Yunhoon. Sick Hay has left Higher Music, as did JB, and he switched over to CDNZA Records. Ailey left the Groovelin Records subsidiary, The Live, and signed with a company called Pop Music. Kim Chaewon from April joined Jangoon Entertainment. And Jin Sil from April signed with Story and Plus. Jang Yuri from Fromis 9 left the group when her contract officially ended July 31st. The girl group Bling Bling has disbanded. Really sad. Oh Mama truly is a bop and a half. Go stream it. XG announced their fandom name will be the Alphas, with a Z at the end. Chan from Ace is enlisting in the military August 16th. 
Congrats to the singer Ben, who is pregnant. Kim Garam's contract with Hybe was terminated, so Les Seraphim will now go on as five members. This follows some bullying allegations they looked into from her school days. Let's look at some first week album sales. Itzy's Checkmate, over 47k copies. Stacy's We Need Love, over 201k copies. E.T.'s The World Episode 1, over 1.1 million in pre-orders, and 270k in one day. As for Country's new releases topped iTunes in, New Jeans debut EP, Nine Regions, TXT and Ian Dior's collab, Valley of Lies, 15, and E.T.'s Gorilla, 28. BTS's Proof is certified gold in France. Blackpink surpassed 30 million TikTok followers. Twice and J-Hope have both entered the Billion Spotify Streams Club. Taeyeon and Weinstein's Love Theory surpassed 15 million streams. New Jeans debut EP reached over half a million pre-orders. Stray Kids surpassed 10 million YouTube subscribers. Kepler's Wadada reached 100 million streams. And now time for your stat updates for view counts. Music video view milestones. 3 million views for Eve's Boucha. 10 million, Taeyeon's Long Flight, and Stacy's Beautiful Monster. Probably more already by the time the episode airs. Also probably more by the time the episode airs, ATBO's Monochrome, which as of now is at 20 million. 45 million, Sun Me, Heartburn. 50 million, Itzy, Sneakers. 100 million, V's Winter Bear, and BTS and Halsey's Boy With Love. 500 million, BTS is on the Kinetic Manifesto version, and 600 million, Blackpink Love Sick Girls, and 4.5 billion with a B views, Psy Gundam Style. While I still have your attention, your action item of the day is a reminder that actually, Flint, Michigan does not still have clean drinking water. I don't believe I've talked about on the show yet, so I apologize for the delay. What the heck, Hope? This should be more of an outrage and get more attention still than it has. It deserves prolonged attention. Long story short, Rick Snyder and eight other culpable figures in the Flint water crisis, when they switched water sources and ended up contaminating the water, leading to all sorts of chronic illness, the Michigan Supreme Court recently threw out charges against Snyder. Charges thrown out, no punishment, for doing that to make a quick buck knowing that it was an unsafe move. If you just want an investigation and true accountability, you could sign a petition, donate to help continue to allow them to get water, bottled water, if that's all they trust now. And overall, for updates on the case, please do visit flintrising.com. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll talk to you all again very soon. Bye, everybody.